Hey everybody, um, it's been a while. Welcome. Today we'll be talking about Strapi starters. So if we go over to strapi.io slash starters, we have um, pre-made starter applications that work with various front-end frameworks that have the front-end pre-built and your back-end um, already generated to suit some configuration and use case. So as the text says, a starter is a pre-made front-end application linked to a template with configured content types, components, dynamic zones, or plugins. We have, uh, as we scroll, you'll see a couple starters, a Gatsby blog starter if you want to do a blog, a Gridsum portfolio starter, a Next.js corporate starter, a Next.js e-commerce starter, and a Next.js e-commerce starter too. We'll click the Next.js e-commerce starter, uh, and this will give us an idea of what this starter comes with. So of course, the use case we know is e-commerce. So it's um, a full stack application with a Next.js front end and a strappy back end uh, with an e-commerce use case. If we wanted to preview this, we could click this and that would show us how the application actually works. We'll do that a bit later. Right now I want to look at what this comes with. So it has one component, a couple collection types for product and categories. Uh, it comes with 27 products created, um, six categories, permissions um, to query products and category collection types. It has Tailwind CSS integrated. It has a slug system for products. Uh, a publication system with draft and published and role based access control. And these are all things you want in uh, an e-commerce application. So it comes with all these already uh, configured and built in Strapi and integrated into Next.js. And that's the point of starters. You don't necessarily have to dive into Strapi projects from zero, no front end, no back end. This helps you get up to speed and then you can add additional functionality depending on what you want. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to do exactly that. So Strapi has a starter CLI. We have commands here. So I'll copy this command and then go to my terminal. I'll paste that here. And this should scaffold two folders, a front end folder and a back end folder, one with our Next.js application and one with our Strapi application. I then get queried about which database I want to use. We'll do quick start so we can use a SQL light database. After running that command, your back end is set up as well as your front end. And you see the difference in terminal logs with blue representing back end logs and green representing front end logs. So we have our Strapi app running on localhost 1337, and we have our um, Nuxt app running on localhost 300. So if we go to localhost 1337, we're asked to enter admin credentials for our admin. I will put something in. We'll click that and let's get started. Once we're in our Strapi admin, we go to categories and we can see the items here. So we have a couple items with certain categories. If we go to products, we can see the actual products in our store. And now let's go to the front end. So now we can see our front end application with a bunch of stickers. This is our e-commerce starter. We can click on items and add them to the cart and then have a checkout managed here. We can integrate our own checkout solutions. Um, we can add other items. Well, if we go to back end stickers, we can add a, a Ruby um, sticker. Uh, we can go to containers and maybe databases, add a Postgres sticker. And all these things can be changed by tweaking a few items in your code. So if you don't like the styling of the cards, you can change how they appear. You can change the color. Let's try and do exactly that. Let's open VS Code. All right, so we open VS Code in the My Project folder, and here you see we have a backend folder which has our Strapi project and a frontend folder which has our Nuxt application. 
in front end, we want to change the contents of our nav bar. So we'll go into components and click nav bar and add an H1. It will look messy, but I'm just trying to show us that we can actually add content to our nav bar. Hello starter. We should say hello starter. And then we should close our H1 tag. Uh, when we save this, it will, the changes should reflect in the front end. So let's go back to our front end app. Um, and there you see it, we have that showing up. It says hello starter. Uh, and now I want something to show in between the categories and the actual products. So we will go to our layouts file where we see everything here. We have the buttons and then next. So we can come here and say something like, um, yeah, H1. Hello, these products are really good. These products are really good. And then H2, sorry, H1, let's close that and then save. Um, and then when we come back, it says, hello, these products are really good right between these. So you can add your own content, you can change um, the styling of these, you can change what's on the screen, but you already have this e-commerce functionality built out and that's the power of Strapi starters. The other side of the Strapi starter, of course, is Strapi itself. If we go to the Strapi admin panel and click products, of course, and if we look at this list view, we have all the products we want. Um, and what we can do here is we could probably unpublish or add different products and have them appear on our front end. Additionally, we can check our marketplace in case we want to add different um, or enable different functionality. We have internationalization now, and you can enable that for your front end, add that functionality. You can go back to VS Code um, into your backend folder and add your own business logic by creating custom controllers and build on top of this starter that already exists. So you don't have to spend time making this happen. And that's really the power of Strapi starters. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to create a Strapi starter um, as well as getting into how Strapi starters work.